द वे फाउंडेज थोड़ा बहुत बहुत स्वागत है मैं थोड़ा होस्ट हरजोत सिंह असी हमेशा थोड़े अपने जोड़े लोगल कम्यूनिटी लीडर्स हैं उन्होंने नाल गलबात कराते हैं उन्होंने तोड़े नाल रूबरू कराते हैं अज जिस कम्यूनिटी लीडर न असी गल करा वो है हंटिंगटन न्यूयॉर्क सिटी काउंसिल टाउन काउंसिल के कैंडीडेट जो श्रैम जो श्रैम एक मार्केटिंग एग्जैक्टिव है एक सक्सैसफुल बिजनेसमैन हैं जो कि नॉर्थपोर्ट हंटिंगटन न्यूयॉर्क रेंदे जो यो वेरी वेरी वेलकम टू द शो Thank you very much for having me. I certainly appreciate the invitation. Joe, thank you very much for taking all the time to speak with us. Uh Joe, I saw your campaign website and it says that you are a Northport homeowner, a leader and a small business owner. Can you tell us something about yourself? Oh, well, thank you. I I I've lived here in Northport um section of the town of Huntington for over 20 years i've spent most of my adult life living in areas of Huntington including Huntington village and Huntington station but i've been a homeowner here for the last 20 years where i live with my life partner steve um i've uh, i've i've been involved in community uh efforts for a long time ever since i was a young man but specifically here in the huntington area i have been serving uh on congressman swazi's committee to interview young people who want to attend annapolis or west point or kings point for example um i also work in helping to uh, raise money for beacon house which is a uh a, a, a home for homeless veterans at the va hospital i work with um raising funds for um lgbt youth I also help raise funds for underprivileged kids so that they can play youth soccer like any other suburban kid and um I've also been involved with Alzheimer's care give and you know supporting Alzheimer's caregivers more specifically to my neighborhood uh recently I've been on the police review committee uh for the Northport Village Police I've served on the future planning committee for our school district and uh and uh, various other activities the 125th anniversary of northport so so i i'm involved in a lot of things like that um yeah i you want to know a little bit about my business um i can tell you that i have, jo, jo, jo before uh, i go there uh, you know we uh we are well aware of the several very good causes that you are involved with you know i i would like to ask you at the very beginning why enter politics now oh well you know the reason is that i have a great concern about um being taxed out of the town Uh, I um I've been involved in the uh, Huntington Town uh Democratic Committee now for about 4 mm, years 4 and a half years but uh right now the reason why I'm jumping in for the first time this is the first time I've ever run for office mm-hmm. uh, is because I see that we are losing revenue from the business side of the tax base and we're losing revenue from the fact that lipa is paying less we're losing revenue from the fact that a uh, small a small uh manufacturers are closing in the town of Huntington we're losing revenue from the fact that many restaurants and businesses closed during covid uh, because of covid uh, and we're also looking at the fact that the majority of employers in the town are non-profits you know the majority of the largest employers that mm-hmm. uh, are non-profits and like school districts and they don't contribute to the tax base and so when you have less money coming into the tax base uh from businesses there's only one other place to look and that is the homeowner and uh and I don't want to see homeowners taxed out of the town and uh and so therefore I think we need to take some action and we need to be proactive about attracting more businesses corporations 
to come to the town of Huntington so that they will pull up the slack and the homeowner does not have to carry the full burden of the tax weight. Mm -hmm. uh, Joe, you know, I, I think it's it's very uh, relevant and it's very timely that you say these things. Our town, our unemployment rate is higher than the national average. Our uh, growth in the recent times has been lower than the national average. And our projected growth for the next 10 years is way less than the national average. So we welcome somebody like you from, uh, from the business uh, community to come forward. Uh, I understand that you uh, run this company called Shram Marketing Group. Can, can you tell us what business are you into? Sure. Um, Shram Marketing Group has been around for about 27, 28 years, mm -hmm. and we are sports, entertainment, and multicultural marketers. So we focus on those three areas, and uh, our clients include leading brands, in sports and mostly television and as well as trade associations and uh and uh, it's been a great business and um we're known for a couple of things where we're known uh, for um, being a leading promoter of international soccer in the United States. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I've always wanted to get into the cricket business, but that's kind of tight and wrapped up. But soccer was a different um, business, and we've been very successful since 1993 in working mostly with targeting Hispanics in this country to uh, have them come out to exciting um, uh, soccer matches and getting soccer telecast on TV. Um, another side of my business is we produce conferences for um, for the television industry. So we're involved with some of the leading conferences in TV and, um, and some of the conferences we've been involved with producing have dramatically shifted the way people of color and different ethnicities and uh, LGBT are portrayed as characters on television. So, you know, no longer are blacks necessarily hoodlums and no longer are Latinos necessarily drug addicts and no longer are gay people necessarily suicidal. So, uh, so uh, I'm very proud of the work that we've done to help shift that conversation on TV. Mm -hmm. yep, that's that's awesome, Joe. Joe, we always we also hear that you have been involved with some business with uh, Bollywood as well. You know, it's very popular with uh, our viewers here. Can you tell us about your involvement with Bollywood? Oh my gosh, I'm so, I'm so lucky to have had the opportunity to work with a, a group of young people, uh, well, young people, they were younger than me. And uh, this goes back maybe 12 years ago, 10 years ago, when they uh, approached me. I had already been in the TV industry and they were trying to bring bo Bollywood movies to the United States and get them on television. So I helped them in, in uh, guiding them with, uh, with cre uh, creating relationships with different cable TV companies. And um, as time went on, they shifted more to focus Focusing on music, uh, that company is called Savin. Uh, maybe some of your uh, viewers are familiar with the Savin music app, and um, so it, it's gone through. I remember when it started out in, in a small office in New York, and and certainly as um, uh, the founders of Savin have done very well for themselves. But it was really exciting, and I really enjoyed learning a lot about the Bollywood movie industry, and I have maintained great relationships with um, a good number of the people I met uh, while I helped uh, Savin get off the ground. But boy, they, they're amazing. Those folks um, really are hard workers and uh, much smarter than me, I think. <laughs> Uh, Joe, I've seen a lot of reference to bicycles in, in, in your uh, campaign. Do, do bicycles hold a special significance? What, what, what's, what's behind the story? Sure. Well, I, 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 bicycling has been a part of my life, uh, well, for more, all my life. It's, uh, it was my first big purchase, uh, was uh, my first bicycle. Now I own multiple bicycles. I love to bicycle ride. And, um, and the, uh, you know, but what's happened is I'm very much aware of the safety issues that we have in the town of Huntington with bicycling. And so, um, 
you know, the, and even Suffolk County legislature has recently passed some laws about cycling, and uh, and it has me a little bit concerned that we we really need to create safety safe places for people to bicycle ride and and pedestrians to walk and and not necessarily the same path because uh, bicycles can be very dangerous to pedestrians so i think we need to as in the town we can focus on on creating safe places in our parks uh, where we can have bicycle trails and pedestrian trails and and uh, and so that we have less bicyclists necessarily on the road and dealing with cars all the time so so I'm taking my personal love mm -hmm. and and applying it to a real safety issue that I know is of concern to many people in the no. town of Huntington whether you're a, driving a car or a pedestrian or a cyclist bicycle safety is common denominator to us all we, 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 we all need that Joe we will talk more about your plan after a short break to see Vic Dero, the way forward. The way forward is thought of to Swagata, Matt or our host Harjot Singh. Aj Asigal Karea, Huntington Town Council, the candidate Joe Shandanal. Joe, we have been hearing uh, of something called the Sham Plan, but before I ask you what that plan is, I would like to know from you something you have been talking about. Please tell us. How does homeowners, the taxes that the homeowners pay, how does that relate to attracting corporations to locate in Huntington Township? Is, is there a correlation? Well, there, there, one relates directly to the other. Uh -huh. And I, I know it doesn't seem that way, but it does. Uh, and, you know, homeowners benefit from the presence of tax paying businesses in the town of Huntington. And I already referenced to the fact that we're actually losing that tax base. Mm -hmm. um, and if you just drove on Jericho Turnpike from one side of the town to the other, mm -hmm. you'll see suburban blight. Stores are empty um, and, and restaurants are gone. Mm -hmm. And it's really unfortunate. Uh, the amount uh, there were the occupancy rate is so low. Mm -hmm. If you look at you go around Melville, you recognize that many of the offices are closed. Mm -hmm. Now I don't know if that's because of the of the pandemic, but I do know personally of many businesses that have left. Uh, I'll give you another example that the Newsday building once was really a production facility. It had one of the largest printing facilities in the town of Huntington, and in fact, anywhere on Long Island. Mm -hmm. And that Newsday stopped printing. Mm. So that is the tax base we had for building uh, is gone, and the building's now gone. Hearts Mountain has torn it down, and they're going to replace it with a much smaller facility. So that means we have less money coming from the, uh, the businesses into our tax coffers. Mm -hmm. And if you look at that, only, if we want to maintain the services that the town of Huntington provides to our residents here, then the only way we can afford to do that is either A, pass that expense on to homeowners, or B, look for alternate ways to bring money into the town. And that's why I've developed the, the, um, the SRAM plan, because the SRAM plan is act to be actively involved mm -hmm. and aggressively seeking businesses and corporations to locate here in the town of Huntington, so that mm -hmm. taxpayers, homeowners, don't get stuck footing the bill all the time. Can you tell us and a little about the plan? Who are the key players involved in the plan? Sure. Well, the, you know, I'll just tell you uh, how what got me, it, it, you know, fired up mm -hmm. was the fact that 
Amazon had announced they were not going to open their corporate regional corporate headquarters in Long Island City. Mm -hmm. And all you have to do is look to our west and see that the town of Oyster Bay organized and were very successful in attracting that facility to locate in Syosset. And they have to build buildings in order to accommodate them. And so what we need to do in the town of Huntington is not sit on our hands anymore. No action was taken. Hmm. We we can't do nothing. If we do nothing, the homeowners will be hurt. So the players are any major corporation that's currently in New York City. Many of them are going to be looking to relocate. This is very similar to a situation maybe 20, 30 years ago when Canon first came to the town of Huntington, when you know major corporations like AT&T left the city and moved out to the suburbs. Now, we're going to see that happen again. That's the trend. Mm -hmm. And Huntington is an ideal place to come. We have a beautiful, we're a beautiful place to live. We have a, a housing at every economic level, and we have beautiful beaches and parks and a great great place for corporations to locate here. Mm -hmm. So we have to look at what we have to deliver. So the people we're looking to attract here are corporations. Um, you know, I'm a small business owner. Shram Marketing Group is a small business. Mm -hmm. But if I think of myself as that fish, it like if you've ever watched Discovery Channel during Shark Week, mm -hmm. you see the sharks swimming through the water and there's hundreds of small fish around that shark. Well, small, those small fish are small business owners here in the town of Huntington. We need the big fish. We need the sharks to come here and we have room for them. And we have to go after major corporations and a lot of them are planning to move or locate here. We And even international corporations, we should be looking for companies to come here mm -hmm. and invite them. And, there's, and the SRAM plan, has a number of steps because, you know, once a corporation comes here, we have to make it easy for them to hire people from from the town of Huntington. Mm -hmm. We have to make it easier for people to get to work. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to relieve traffic. We want to look at traffic flow. Mm -hmm. We want to look at our Huntington area rapid transit. Joe, Joe and, that's, that's, that's something I wanted to point out. You know, whereas this, this development is most welcome and most needed, you know, the residents of this town are very, very conscious of maintaining that, that small town character as well. You know, uh, sure. so they don't want to be totally run over by, by this traffic, this parking problems, this over expansion. What, what solution do you propose for that? Well, you know, well, one is exactly that. We have to look at traffic flow. I, I you know, we, we, I live in the village of Northport, and um, we had a real par parking problem here. Mm -hmm. And we did a number of studies, and we were able to figure out ha um, uh, different opportunities and options for us to uh, address that issue. I think the town of Huntington would benefit from some of that experience. Uh, and also, I think that, uh, that so we need to do a traffic flow study. We have to look at creating incentives for people to park in certain areas. You know, um, it, and uh, and so if we have incentives for people to park in, like, I'll, for, I'll be very specific, like employees need to park in certain specific areas or incentivize people to not necessarily drive through town and park in one area to make their life to rather than we want to attract them to a specific parking lot or something of that nature. Mm -hmm. So. I, I don't know if I'm being clear, but the fact is there are so many different options that we can take from other communities that um, are reimagining themselves. It's time for Huntington to reimagine itself. And we have a really great opportunity to do that because we have lots of space. So to your point about the fact that there are residents who are concerned about traffic, well, you know, we have less business here than we did 10 years ago. So mm -hmm. if you lived here 10 years ago, mm -hmm. you were dealing with more traffic than you're dealing with now. So maybe you got a little bit spoiled by that, but, but we need to look at what happened 10 years ago and say, where were the problem spots? Are we going to have those same problem spots again? Mm -hmm. And if so, let's figure out a way to avoid that becoming a problem. So mm -hmm. there are things that we can do. 
No, uh, it, it, it's it's very uh, reassuring to uh, hear that because you know as we as we discussed, the residents here, whereas they are uh, really looking for some development, they are very concerned about uh, with their sound, uh, you know, with, with the environment, with their clean water. So I'm 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 very uh, happy to hear that you are very conscious of that as well. Uh, Joe, recently there was an incident uh, in, in Walt uh, Whitman uh, Mall where a 16 was attacked and uh, a 16 uh, and another teen has been arrested and charged with hate crime you know we have seen that sentiment uh, against Asians uh, you know in the country lately what, what specifically do you think should be done to address an issue like that well I think we uh, you know, hate has always been around. I am, um, uh, I am, uh, I am a member of the LGBT community. I, I, I have been the subject of that hate and belligerence. Uh, you know, I, I don't. Uh, so I, I know what we're talking about, and uh, and we may think that the world has changed and people are easier going, but I, I think you would agree with me that we're seeing an increase in hate crimes and and belligerence towards people who are not like everybody else. So, you know. First of all, I think it starts with families and and churches and religious organizations and schools, and to to really help educate um, uh, young people on appreciating different cultures or people who are different, mm. as opposed to uh, fearing them, because hate comes from fear. I think we all know that. And I think um, I'm a marketer, and I'm a big believer in social campaigns, you know, public service announcements, and and uh, really changing or shifting the way people think. And you can do that through TV commercials and television shows. And I spoke earlier about what I do, so, yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Jo Joe, we are running out of time. Oh. You know, I would just like to hear from you. What is it that you bring to the town hall that is different than, than uh, anyone else? Why should we vote for Joe Schramm? Uh, you should vote for me because a town councilman's first responsibility is to be entrusted with the budget of the town mm. and, and to make sure that you are your investment in this town as a property owner is is cared for and and i am a businessman i have been entrusted by major leading brands for many years with their multi-million dollar budgets and so i would treat every homeowner's investment in this town with the same care and and transparency that I treat my clients' money. So what I bring to the town mm. is a real commitment to mm. your to treating your money correctly. And we haven't seen that in the last uh, couple of years. I think we've seen a waste of your money and my money, <laughs> and that ticks Joe, me off. <laughs> Joe, I, I really appreciate your coming to the studio today through Skype. Uh, I wish you all the very best for your campaign. Thank you very much for speaking with us today. Well, thank you for the invitation and for the privilege of speaking to your audience. I really appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. All the very best. Asi Mildea, ek choti ji break the baat. The way forward is Tora Firtu Swagata, Matt or a host Harjot Singh. ਹੁਣ ਅਸੀਂ ਗੱਲ ਕਰਾਂਗੇ ਹੰਟਿੰਗਟਨ ਟਾਊਨ ਕਾਉਂਸਲ ਦੇ ਇੱਕ ਹੋਰ ਕੈਂਡੀਡੇਟ ਜੈਨ ਹੀਬਰ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਜੈਨ ਯੂ ਆਰ ਵੈਰੀ ਵੈਰੀ ਵੈਲਕਮ ਟੂ ਦਾ ਸ਼ੋ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਸੋ ਮਚ ਫਾਰ ਹੈਵਿੰਗ ਮੀ ਆਮ ਰੀਅਲੀ ਗਲੈਡ ਟੂ ਬੀ ਹੀਅਰ ਜੈਨ ਵੀ ਕੈਨ ਸੀ ਯੂ ਆਰ ਔਨ ਦਾ ਕੈਂਪੇਨ ਟ੍ਰੇਲ ਐਂਡ ਵੀ ਰੀਅਲੀ ਐਪਰੀਸ਼ੀਏਟ ਯੂ ਟੇਕਿੰਗ ਆਊਟ ਦਾ ਟਾਈਮ ਟੂ 
Well, I'm, I'm very glad to be here. I'm so sorry that I don't have a better backdrop behind me besides my car, but I didn't want to miss the chance to speak to you and your, your listeners. And I also didn't want to miss out on an opportunity to do some campaigning out in town. So I'm trying to fit as much into this day as possible. But thank you for your patience and for having me here. We, we appreciate that and we understand that. Jill, I understand that you have been a lifelong educator uh, and a business leader you have uh, been uh, president and trustee of the Huntington School District for nine years. Can you tell our viewers more about yourself? Sure. Uh, so one of the things that I'm most passionate about in life is education and young people. Uh -huh. And so I've dedicated my professional career to doing just that, both as a a uh, teacher, I taught public school education when I lived in Massachusetts. I taught ki uh, kindergarten in a public school for a number of years. Mm -hmm. Then I moved to Long Island with my husband when we wanted to start a family. And although I didn't go back to teaching in a public school, once my children were school age, I did go back to teaching in a nursery school so that I could both work and be home when my kids got home. Um, at that point, after about five years of teaching in that nursery school, the director retired and I was able to move into the director's position. So I'm now an administrator for the last six years and I run all aspects of the nursery school, including personnel and registration and health and safety and building facilities, all of those types of things, tuition, you know, making sure that we were, you know, within the regulations. And then um, about 10 years ago was a really dark time in my school district. For those of you who are from the Huntington School District area, you may remember that 10 years ago was when uh, a school building got closed because of a spate of violence that was in the area. Mm -hmm. And at that time they closed one of our school buildings and it was, um, I thought, a terrible decision. And so at that point, I ran for school board. There were five of us running for two spots and I was able to get the most votes and take one of those spots and be part of the board that then reopened that school and uh, reinvigorated the education of the school district by um, turning that building into a STEM, which stands for science, technology, engineering, and math, a mm -hmm. STEM focused magnet school, which has really, um, I think, improved the educational offerings of our school district, but it also allowed us to do some other changes to the school district that were to the benefit of the students and the community. Mm -hmm. So I'm awesome. very, very proud. I know that was kind of a long answer. I'm really proud of the work that I did on the school district. I had nine years I worked for the school district and it's all volunteer work. So while you do get elected, I think it may be the only elected unpaid volunteer position that you can run for. And I did it proudly and I was so grateful and so happy to be part of that school district and never looked back. Just so gratified no, by no. the work that I did there. Jen, Jen, we thank you for your service. We appreciate that. And uh, in the times we are now, you know, uh, Education uh, ha has been badly affected with this COVID situation, you know, so it would be great to have somebody like you who knows it firsthand, what does it take to provide that, to make it possible for our kids. Uh, Jen, how, how long uh, have you been a resident of Huntington? Have you been here for, for long? So I am born and raised on Long Island, but in Nassau County in a small town called East Williston. I don't know how many of you would recognize it. It's a really tiny town. Mm -hmm. But I graduated from Wheatley High School and then went to college in Boston. My husband is a man from Maine. We met when we were at Tufts University, and when we decided we wanted to start a family, we realized that we needed or wanted to be closer to one of our families, and I always say I won that battle, so we ended up on Long Island. But at that time, we really wanted to move to a town that, first of all, offered us some of the things that New England offered in terms of an old-fashioned community sense and a walkable downtown. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that we were really looking for that was very important to us was diversity because being away at college, I realized that that a diverse community brings a richness and a, a depth and a, a 
and just benefits that that we really wanted for our family and wanted our children to be a part of. And so Huntington met the bill for us. And so I think it was about 25 years ago that we moved here and pretty soon we uh, you know, had our first son followed by two more sons. And 25 years later, we're still in the same house that um, that we bought and we intend to stay, uh, you know, f forever, basically. That, that, that's great to know. Uh, Jen, uh, besides your uh, role as an educator, are there any community groups, service groups that you're involved with? Yes, I, most of the community work that I've done has centered around the school district and around education because as I said earlier, it, it, I'm passionate about education, particularly public school education, which I feel is such a vital part of our democracy. So I have to say that most of the community work I've done has been around the school district, but within working within the school district, it's given me an opportunity to attend and be part of all kinds of community community groups, including attending meetings for the Huntington Opportunity Resource Center. Mm -hmm. I attended town board meetings as a school district person. That's the first time I actually attended a town meeting was to attend it as a school board member. Mm -hmm. And I've been part of, I have to say, I've been part of HEFI, which is the Huntington Foundation for Excellence in Education. Since I left the board, I've uh, joined that organization to help bring grant money to programs at the school district that the um, school district itself can't afford to um, support financially. Mm -hmm. And I also was really actively involved in the Boy Scouts of America because my husband was a PAC leader, PAC 310. He was the leader for a long time. And so I was able to be part of that organization as well and donate and volunteer some of my time. Mm -hmm. So Jen, I would like to ask you, what is your inspiration behind running for this office? My inspiration behind running for this office is that I really feel that our town hall isn't serving our community as well as it should. Mm -hmm. I feel that it, a lot of times what's going on at town hall is ineffective and unresponsive to the community needs. And I know that after serving nine years on a school board, I have the skills that it takes to make our town hall more responsive to the community and the taxpayers. I've worked on behalf of our community before. I worked as a volunteer for nine years. And, and I, I would be so happy to put those skills and that experience to good work for our community members here in Huntington Township. Mm -hmm. And I really think that my experience would be a great match for what needs to be done at Town Hall. But I also think that coming in with fresh eyes and looking at the Town Hall as somebody who has never held a political office would also be of value because I think that right now what we need is to kind of reimagine some of our systems. I think if there's one thing the pandemic showed us, mm -hmm. it's that some of our systems are antiquated, that they could use reimagining, and that there are probably ways to um, modernize and reinvent some of the ways that town hall works for our community that would make it more effective and less expensive to the taxpayers. Jen, we will talk more about your plan after a short break. To see Vektero, the way forward. The way forward is Toda Firtu Swagata, Matt Toda host Harjot Singh. Aj Asi Gal Karea, Huntington Town Council, the candidate Jen Hibertnal. Jen, I would like to uh, ask you what do you think are the top three issues in this election? I think the top three issues. Uh are, for one thing, I think the inefficiency of town hall and the way it's running right now, which I just spoke about. I think that it needs to be revamped and um, made to work better for our community and our taxpayers. Mm -hmm. The second issue that I think is really important is our environment. I think that living on Long Island, we're all well aware that our natural resources are incredibly important to us. Mm -hmm. I don't think that we wanna wait until it's too late to be able to take good care of them. And I think that a thoughtful, proper plan in terms of development and infrastructure is necessary and vital mm -hmm. to protecting our natural resources. Mm -hmm. And then finally, I would say the third issue for me is always going to be about the youth. So I really would like to see Huntington 
provide more programs, more mentorship programs, more internships, more opportunities for young people to be involved in positive things when they're outside of school. And I think that any, any um, support and any opportunities that we can provide to our young people will pay off down the road because we'll have wonderful community um, involvement from them and we'll know that we've provided them with what they deserve and need. <laughs> Uh, and Jen, you know, there's there's a lot a lot of t talk in the town that we need uh, development. We need to bring in businesses. We had Joe on the show earlier, and he was telling why we need to bring business, you know, to protect uh, you know the property taxes. We we need to raise revenue somewhere. And I asked him as well that you know a big concern for our residents is is the character of the town. You know, whereas we definitely want development, uh, we don't want to pay that extra money in taxes, we still don't want to be overburdened with, with traffic, issues with uh, parking, and uh, you know, uh, losing our beautiful environment that we have around us. D how, how do you look at this situation? Do, do you draw a balance somewhere? I think balance is the key word. You just use the word that I've been using over and over because it does need to be a balancing act and it's not easy. We need revenue in town. Joe is absolutely positively right and he has some great ideas about how to bring more revenue into the town. On the flip side of that coin is the idea that people move to Huntington because they liked the character of the town. It's the same thing I just said about why my husband and I moved here. Mm -hmm. We moved to Huntington because it reminded us of New England. It had the character and the old fashioned feel of a neighborhood you might find in, in New England with a downtown where people know each other. And that's true of Huntington. I walk around the village of Huntington and I walk in and out of the shops that I'm in every day. And there is that feeling of having a real hometown. That is a balancing act, That, but, but it's not impossible. And obviously there are ways, If I think if we're creative enough and thoughtful enough I think we can come up with ways to balance that out. In other words, we want to bring additional revenue into the town and we certainly want to support our small businesses and they deserve our support always, but especially now coming off of that pandemic. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we don't want to see any more of our green spaces and our open spaces overdeveloped. I think people like parks they moved to huntington because it has beautiful access to the water we don't want to see everything paved with concrete and and um lose that character so i think some of the things that we have to consider are ways to reimagine some of the buildings that we already have up mm -hmm. in other words some of the retail businesses unfortunately are not going to reopen after the pandemic and especially some of these big box stores i know in hicksville close to where i grew up there was a huge sears store it was there forever for decades mm -hmm. it was going out of business for a long time it's been you know sears has been struggling well what they did is they turned it into a senior living center and it was a brilliant way to to basically recycle one building and use it to provide to the community things that we really need now. So while the community maybe couldn't support a giant Sears anymore, what we do have is a population on Long Island that needs places to live where, you know, especially in our aging population where there's assisted living, where they have access to support systems. So I think given creativity and, um, a willingness to do the hard work to find the solutions, and that's what I bring to the table, is a willingness to do the hard work to find the solutions. I really think we can strike a balance between providing revenue and bringing new business into town while at the same time maintaining the beautiful, charming character of this town that we love so much. <laughs> uh Jen, you mentioned that one of the things that, that attracted uh, you to Huntington was its diversity. Now, yes. uh, South Asians, which, are, which are, are most of the viewers uh, of this show, uh, are new immigrants into the community. I wanted to ask you, have you been able to reach out to South Asians? What, what are you doing to reach out to this community for your elections? 
I have been actually able to, and I've been recently invited um, to attend, to come and visit a mosque, mm -hmm. which is a lovely uh, invitation. I'm very much looking forward to it this weekend. I have been trying to find as many opportunities as possible to meet community members and community groups that I haven't had an, an ability to interact with. Obviously, through the school district, I had an opportunity to interact with families from all different places who were, you know, uh, not only from different places culturally, but even from different places socioeconomically and different places educationally. And I always, always am happy for those opportunities because I feel like the richness that comes from the diversity and and is a is a benefit it's a treasure it's it's what makes our country a great place it's what made the huntington school district a really special place so i would say to your viewers that if they have ideas and ways for me to get out and meet more of our community members that I haven't met yet and more groups of people that I haven't been able to interact with yet, I would love to hear from them because the one thing you'll know about me is I am happy for any opportunity to meet with people. I'm really a people person. It's a, another one of the strengths that I would bring to the table because I very much like to work collaborative, collaboratively with people. Mm -hmm. I also really like to listen to people. I think it's really important I think that's one of the skills that we have lost over time is the ability to be a really good and respectful listener. Mm -hmm. And so I hope to provide that too. And if your listeners out there would like to invite me somewhere to be a good listener and to interact, I would love to hear from them. I, I, I'm sure uh, our viewers have noted that down and they are planning to meet you soon. That's uh, good. I, I mean it when I say it. So you invite me and I'll be there. Sure. Uh, Jen, recently there was an unfortunate event uh, in, in the town of Huntington at Walt uh, Whitman uh, Mall. A, a teen sick uh, a teenager mm -hmm. uh, was attacked by another teen. Now uh, the other teen has uh, was arrested and has been charged with a hate crime. Now we have we have seen this increasing uh, in a number of hate crimes uh, around the country, particularly against Asians at the uh, at this time. How, how how do you address a situation like that? Well, first of all, I think you you need to make an example of the person who committed the offense in the first place so that people get the message that that is unacceptable in our town. Mm -hmm. It's unacceptable in our country, but let's start right here and say it is unacceptable in our town. Um, I also think that, the again, the more education you can give people, the better. I think when you start people young, realizing and acknowledging that that diversity and differences are a, are a wonderful thing. It's something to be celebrated and not something to be targeted. I think it's really important that you reach people when they're young about that. Mm -hmm. I also think it's really important that we elect leaders who speak those kinds of words and those and and know how to um, to support and advance diversity and inclusion and not tolerance. I hate that word of tolerance because I feel like it sounds like, well, we're just putting up with it. It's not tolerance we need. What we need is true appreciation and, and integration and diversity that's celebrated. And I think that we do that when we elect leaders who believe that. I think part of the reason that we're seeing an increase in so many hate crimes has to do with the leadership that we had over the last four years, frankly. I think it opened up a Pandora's box and people who would never have thought to say some of these things out loud have suddenly been given hmm. license to say these things out loud. And I think what we need our leaders to send the message that it isn't acceptable to say those things out loud or to certainly act on those kinds of thoughts. Absolutely. So I do think it has something to do with leadership. Jen, Jen uh, we have run out of time here. <laughs> I, I would uh, ask you to quickly tell us what differentiates you from the other candidates and why are you the most desirable candidate for the, for the town council? 
Okay, first of all, I want to thank you so much for having me and for putting up with me being in my car and out on the campaign trail. I will tell you, I think the thing that differentiates me is, first of all, my experience on the school board and, and my experience of being somebody who already represented this community. I spent nine years proudly representing to the Huntington community, and it was the most gratifying work I've done besides being a mom. So I really feel like I already bring that experience to the table. I know how to be responsive to people who are having issues or who are coming to me with concerns. I know how to follow up. And on top of that, I know how to make tough decisions and not, um, and not be afraid to stand by them. When I make a decision, I make it for the right reasons. And because of that, even if I find there's a pushback, if I feel I've made a decision for the right reason, I'm absolutely ready to stand by it. The other thing I would say is, and, and this has to do with my experience, mm -hmm. I know a lot of the people who will be running will be you know, business owners and people who have had you know, jobs running corporations or maybe you know, heads of things. What you have in me is a person who volunteered nine years of my time and energy already for this community. So when Jen, I yes. tell Jen, you that I'm ready to do that, I am ready to do that. Sure. Jen, we thank you very much for taking out this time to speak with us. We wish you all the very best for your campaign. Thank you so much, and I really appreciate you having me. Good night to everybody. Thanks thank again. Bye-bye. Asige Sade Do. Uh, Long Island Huntington दे दो candidates Huntington Town Council वस्ते I hope कि तुसी closely वेखे हो ना तुसी वेखते रो the way forward